Well, it's personal between me and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire proudly presents something the boxing game's been missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT. I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. All right, so uh, this past weekend, obviously, we had the big Bam Rodriguez card with Sonny Edwards that, that dominated the headlines in boxing. Obviously, uh, Ryle Valenzuela got a, got a highlight reel knockout against Chris Colbert in the rematch. That dominated the headlines in boxing. Uh, David Morello Jr. put a straight demolition job on Senna Agbeko. That dominated the headlines, but lost in the shuffle of all this, I, I feel, because I feel like this story is not quite getting the the attention and the coverage it deserves in the boxing world. And you, and you guys know me. You guys know that True School Sports is the home of boxing. You know, uh, BT, the untouchable True School Sports Empire, you know, what we do here is we, we talk about boxing, but more importantly, um, we definitely stick up for the, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the little guy in boxing. You know, the, some, 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 those fighters that sometimes get overlooked or those fighters that sometimes don't have the biggest voice. You know, I try to bring light to those guys and, 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 and put the people that watch my platform, my channel, my content on game to what's going on and give them you know, the best insight I can, right? So, to me, the best story of this past weekend, those are all great uh, fights and performances and things like that that I mentioned previously, but to me, the real story of the weekend was on the undercard of uh, Bam Rodriguez versus Sonny Edwards because I was watching the undercard and there was a fight. There was a fight in the, in the Bantamweight division. I believe, I'm going to say it was Bantamweight. Right, was it Bantam weight? Was it Bantam or Super Bantam? I'm gonna make sure I got my facts straight because I want to be, I want to be in order. I want to be tactful. I want to be very specific. And I want, I want to be very frank. And yes, it was a fight in the Super Bantam weight division, and it was supposed to be a coming out party for one of the matchroom prospects. You know, the, the, you know, the, I never made a video about him, but I know who he is. Uh, Peter McGrail uh, from from Liverpool. You know, he's Scouse. Um, South Paul had a, a a pretty good amateur background. It was his American debut, so he was supposed to take this fight, and he's supposed to win, and it was supposed to catapult him to bigger and better things, a stepping stone, so to speak. And uh, the guy that was faced across the uh, across the ring from him is a guy that I've seen fight, a guy that I actually went live for um, his only loss of his career, which was uh, none other than Detroit's very own Jarico O'Quinn. Yes, that Jarico O'Quinn. Now, O'Quinn suffered a setback in uh 2021 against saul sanchez and i remember i went live for that fight and jarrico o'quinn got obliterated he got dropped three times and got stopped in the first round by saul sanchez and uh since that fight you know you know he's been, he's been winning some little fights against some uh you know not you know not the biggest names but i remember when he fought carlos mujica um back in july i had a chance to watch that fight uh, competitive fight, but I wasn't really like blown away by his performance in that fight. So nothing on paper or in his previous performances that I had seen from Jarrico O'Quinn told me that he was going to beat Peter McGrill. It felt like it was just going to be business as usual, smooth sailing as usual for uh, Peter McGrill. And it was supposed to be his coming out party. But what happened to Peter McGrill? He was boxing Jarrico O'Quinn and, you know, winning round after round. You know, he won. He won the first round. He won the second round. He won the third round. He won the fourth round. He was using that range. He was touching him. He was keeping him at bay. He was pretty much in firm control of the fight. Nothing seemed to be going on for him. And then the fifth round comes. So the fifth round comes. And, um, you know, he's boxing him, boxing him. And then what does he do? He does what Ben Davison. I don't, I don't know who his trainer is, but Ben Davison, another British trainer, always tells his fighters, don't get greedy, right? Peter McGrill got a little greedy. Peter McGrill got a little bit greedy, ladies and gentlemen. So what did Peter McGrill do? Peter McGrill started to... Close the gap. He started to come forward, try to look for the knockout. And when he looked for the knockout, he found that Detroit right hand upside his head. So Jarrico O'Quinn just kind of, as he's coming in, loops the right hand. Bang! Puts him right on his ass. Peter McGrill don't know what hit him. Peter McGrill's on the canvas looking like, you know, he got hit by a Mack truck. And um, he couldn't get up. And Jarrico O'Quinn... As a, I believe he was like what a six to one or a four to one underdog, something like that. He was he was a pretty sizable underdog. Jarrico O'Quinn scores the biggest win of his career in a fight that he looked like he had no business winning, and um, he takes the old Peter McGrill. Now, it, to give you guys context to ha the kind of uh, hype that Peter McGrill was getting on that side of the pond from the boxing industry, Peter McGrill had been called by some to be the the Scouse Lomachenko. Um, you know, because he's Southpaw, got good footwork. I mean, I, th I think it's a bit of an exaggeration, but people were calling him that. He's a good fighter. 
And uh, they picked Jarrico O'Quinn for a reason, okay? And McGrail was winning the fight easily. And then he got caught. And funny enough, to give you guys more context, Jarrico O'Quinn is not even like, really like a full-time boxer because um, I think sometimes boxing fans don't realize this. Um, lost in the midst of their favorite fighters who have millions of dollars pumped into their careers and are marketed to them. Lost in the shuffle of everything that, that's marketed to boxing fans. Well, most boxing fans don't realize that in the grand scheme of things, in the in the ecosystem of, of fighters in boxing, most fighters got to get a job, a, a, a nine-to-five job, because they can't afford to live off boxing alone. So they have to do something to support themselves and their training expenses, um, unless they have a manager who's, you know, giving them a stipend or fronting, or fronting the money, right? And even that's not the best thing sometimes because some managers don't, don't have the fighter's best intentions at heart, right? So with that being said, an established, Jarrico Quinn has a nine to five job. So he, 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 he fought this guy, Peter McGrill, with all the odds against him, you know, the, the match room against him, this guy is a top amateur, you know, a uh, uh, really good fighter, you know, uh, rising prospect in the sport. And um, Jarrico Quinn, he found a way to win when it didn't, didn't look like he was going to win. And that should dramatically change the trajectory of his career. And I, and I, and I love I love stories like this because um, boxing is such a hard sport to make it in. And it's even harder to make it in when you're the B-side type of fighter, right? So when, when, you, when you do see a B-side fighter overcome against all odds, you, you, you love to see it in boxing. Um, Jarrico O'Quinn um, said it best in the post fight uh, press interview. He said, "You know, they try to cherry pick me, but when you pick the wrong cherries, that's what happens." And, he, and, and he's taking the old Peter McGrill, and uh, he told Peter McGrill he need to go tighten his defense up, right? So good for him, man. Good for him. And let's let, let's talk about him for a second because I'm sure he's been working very hard in his life because he says he has to work 12 hours a day. I don't know what he does for a living, but he said he works 12 hours a day. So. Um, you know, right now, I don't think he's ranked anywhere, but on box rec, he's ranked number 20th, right? And I think there's some good fights for uh, Jarrico Quinn. Good for him. Um, obviously, I know with the way Matchroom operates, they'll probably try to do the Peter McGrill rematch, which if they do, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it straight like this to Eddie Hearn and Matchroom Boxing. If you do the Peter McGrill re rematch, we ain't pull. I don't want to see no funny business, no foolishness with um. Oh, uh, 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 you're 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 gonna fight on the Anthony Joshua or Katie Taylor undercard somewhere in the UK or Ireland? No, 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 no. Remember, he got Peter McGrill got plastered. Peter McGrill wanted to have his USA coming out party, and then he came out to America and he found out that American shit is different, right? So now that he found that out, and and Jarrico Quinn took his O. Okay, it's only fair and it's only just make the rematch in Detroit. Make the rematch in Detroit. Jarrico O'Quinn won the fight. Make the rematch in Detroit. If, if, if Peter McGrail really has the minerals in his heart to win a fight, he can go to Detroit and do it. And if not, then he, you know, he'll forever be exposed as the fake scout Slomachenko, right? So with that being said, either a rematch in Detroit between those two or Jarrico O'Quinn deserves some fights against, you know, um, you know, some guys ranked in and around him. I mean, you got Liam Davies, who's 15. He, already, he beat one Brit. What's another one to him? That could be a good fight for the, uh, for him. You got TJ Dohaney, who's been knocking everything out in sight. Um, I like that fight for him. Maybe that could be a fight. Um, Merge on Akwadali have did fight on this card. Why not? Why don't Merge on test this luck against Jarrico O'Quinn, you know? Um, listen, there's options out there for him. I, I think this should up his pay and it should up his... Bracket and maybe he might 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 be a chance where he doesn't have to work his job anymore. Hopefully, hopefully um that's the case for him. But um look, good great good for him, man. Good for him. Cause I remember when I watched him fight Saul Sanchez, it wasn't pretty. He got butchered in that fight, got beat up badly. But you know what? It's a cliche saying, but sometimes it's true. Sometimes in life you, you have a minor setback for the chance to have a major comeback. And maybe this is what's happening for Jarrico Quinn in his career. So Detroit, 313, the motor city. Stand up. Tariko Quinn taking O's. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. What did you guys think of the fight if you watched it? And what do you think should happen with Jarrico Quinn and, and Peter McGrail? Uh, leave your comments down below. Make sure you guys take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just a kid from Daniels. Until next time, take care, guys. Thank you for watching another video on the untouchable True School Sports Empire. For more great boxing content just like this video, click right here. And make sure you subscribe. Much love from sunny South Florida.